Welcome to the Local Marketing Source Weekly Update, brought to you by localmarketingsource.com. This week's Local Marketing Update is brought to you by Scott Gallagher. Scott is the co-founder of Local Marketing Source and has become the recognized expert in providing online marketing services to local businesses. Follow Scott on Twitter at ScottGallagher5 and on Facebook.com slash Scott P. Gallagher. Hey, well, good afternoon, everyone. Scott Gallagher here with Local Marketing Source, bringing your weekly local marketing industry update. Now, next week's LMS member call is going to be Wednesday, September 16th at 4 p.m. Eastern. And don't forget to subscribe to our weekly podcast on iTunes, as well as our YouTube channel. Now, this week, we've got just a couple of different things to talk about for the overview and tell you a little bit about what else is going on in the uh, the agency growth group. And this week... Uh, there's been an upgrade to Google Street View, and it's allowing something called Photospheres. Photospheres. I think I pronounced that wrong. That's a tongue twister. Uh, but it's not quite fully ready, and we're going to call it the poor man's version of interior photography, but we'll we'll get to that. And then there's been some uh, weird things going on with Google this week, and they... Um, well, their index count is is really screwed up, so I want to talk a little bit about that and, and get going. Now, we've completed our, well, not quite completed, but we are now well into our second week of our premium agency growth group. And I'll tell you what, uh, this, is bit, this is just fantastic, being able, being able to work with people one-on-one -on -one and face-to-face. -face. And if there's something I've learned in just the last week that I'm going to implement right across the board for all my communications, is every opportunity possible is throwing on my webcam when having Skype communication. And uh, that's that's been really, really fulfilling, being able to see people. And I, I tell you what, I really feel like uh, I've lost a lot in the last 10 years being in the business that I'm in in electronic communications, having a daughter that's 17 years old, knowing that half of her communications is electronically. I think about this stuff a lot that, you know, these, these kids that are they're growing up, um, they're, they're developing emotions and relationships. And, and we, we have emotions. We're human beings. We, we, we live off of emotions. We make decisions off of our emotions, whether it be in business or with a significant other. And, uh, why? Why do we have so much of our communication electronically? And we know that, you know, oh, well, video is definitely helping uh, search. We, we know that, and video definitely helps conversion. Well, why? Because it conveys those, those nonverbal elements of communication. So I was talking to my buddy, and we're having a little Skype message, and, and I said, you know, and here we have, we have video phones. I mean, back in the 80s, we used to say, wow. Pretty soon you're going to be able to see the person you talk to, and it was such video phone was such a big idea. And you notice it it never really happened. It just kind of showed up, you know. And none of us were like, well, it's kind of cool, but whatever. We still don't utilize it nearly enough. Uh, I didn't intend on talking about this, but I just wanted to share with you some of my feelings of insight of something that I've learned in the last week. That you know I'm going to carry with me. And I just had a long conversation with a friend today, and I said, we're going on Skype, buddy. Oh, okay, I'll throw mine on. I'm not ready. He was all all weirded out, and I'm like, dude, I've known you for 25 years. We went back to high school together. I mean, there have been times that you've seen me at my absolute worst. There's no doubt about that, and likewise for you. And you're concerned about getting on camera for me because you're sitting in your office at home? <laughs> <laughs> just the mentality I, I laugh at it it's a lot of fun um but the uh the, the growth group is, has, has been interesting and and you know one of the very first things that i always talk about is you know lincoln says if i had eight hours to chop down a tree i'd spend six hours sharpening my axe i love it because what, what, what that really is is it's like like when i'm cooking dinner okay i can't cook dinner in a dirty kitchen. I, I could have that kitchen dirty all day and I could care less. It could be dishes from the night before. 
and I, I could do all my stuff all day all around, but the moment that I started cooking food, I need to have the right workspace. And then what I would do is while I'm cooking, I go and I bring out all my condiments that I know I'm going to need, all my ingredients, all my spices, and I'll have everything set out right there so that when I'm actually preparing the meal or cooking the meal, I've got everything. When I go bring my food out to the barbecue, I make sure that I've got my oven mitt, that I've got my base, that I've got my tongs, that if I'm doing charcoal, that I've got some wood that's been, you know, everything, everything is all ready to go that I just need it. So when I do cook, I'm not having to run back into the kitchen real quickly because I forgot something and have something burn or flip and I, I can just do my job. It, it doesn't matter what we do. It, it's important that, you know, we have the right tools, the right environment. I can't really work in a dirty environment. Um, well, I can because throughout the whole week, I look at my office now in the middle of the week on Wednesday, and uh, yeah, my my desk is fairly covered with papers, and you know, I got stuff all over the place. But Monday morning, I I get get going, and so tools, I think, are are critical. That I would have had ten years ago had a hard time spending two grand on a laptop when I could have bought a five hundred dollar Windows. Uh, Mac is what I'm getting at. Macs are twice the price. I won't hesitate now. I've realized after having a Mac for two years how much time it saved me in not having to reinstall Windows, <laughs> not having to deal with the blue screen of death, uh, not having computers hang up when I'm trying to do some heavy video work or, or anything of that nature. In other words, the investment in my tool has really made me a lot better. So these students that are in the, the growth program, I, I said that that's, I mean, that's critical. We've got to have we got to have a plan of some sort. And if you don't have a plan, you, you know, guys, right? We just like to go somewhere. We don't like asking for directions. Well, this, this is bullshit. I don't care about asking for directions. I'll be the first one to do it because I get I get to be more more efficient. But no matter what, even in my own hometown now, I'm throwing on my GPS and I'm just a, a sheep. I'm just a robot and follow that little machine. But the fact is, is that's my plan. You know, a business plan is like your GPS unit that you know you know when to turn you know the efficient route to get there at least based off the information that you had and and so it amazes me how many entrepreneurs don't have a business plan in place and how important planning is planning is there's just so many different elements of planning so uh, you know for example it's like okay friday we sit down and we evaluate what did we do and how what did we not accomplish that was a part of our plan monday we sit down and you plan and you create a business plan, essentially, for your week. What are you going to do that week? Every quarter, I sit down at my business. How am I evaluating and how well am I doing compared to my one-year plan? What can I change? And then, of course, I have a one-year plan that's printed up and it's beside me at all times. Why people don't do that? Why business owners don't have a plan with them? I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. Nobody can have a business plan in their head. You can't. You just can't. So why would you not have your roadmap in front of you when you're driving. Why don't you have your business plan beside you in your office? It, it makes no sense. And, and so um, we were working on those plans and, and getting that together more so from a marketing perspective. And one thing that I also wanted to talk about plans is, you know, again, I was talking to my buddy today. He's got a photography business. He's starting up. He says, you know what I'm doing, Scott? I, I'm going to be signing up with this this program, this course. And they're going to teach me how to build a business plan. And after the course is done, I walk out with a business plan. I said, well, that's kind of cool. What, you know, tell me about it. And he says, well, it's like um, two weeks and it's eight hours a day for, for two weeks. And it's 2,500 bucks. I said, so you're going to spend 2,500 bucks and you're going to spend two weeks and you're going to walk out with a business plan. And, well, there's going to be some benefit to that. And I got a student on the line right now. She's going to definitely relate to this conversation because I had the same conversation with her a couple of days ago. And I said, when we start to look at a business plan and start to break apart what the business plan really is, there's so much fluff and BS in, inside that business plan that, that that's not relevant. Yeah, okay, it's it's relevant um, in a big picture, and and it's relevant if you wanted investors. And yes, it's 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 relevant for you know. Uh, looking at partners and yeah it's relevant for um, for you to get research and have an understanding of it and I'm talking about items like your uh, your market segment size all right so you got an internet marketing agency and in my case I deal with uh, 
with uh, chiropractors. So what's my market size? Well, you know, the answer to that question is the sum of all the chiropractors in the United States, the sum of all the marketing expenses that they put together in the U.S. Well, who the hell has that number? We can make some estimations off of it. I could say, well, there's 60,000 chiropractors in the U.S. and, you know, their average marketing spend is, you know, where do I get that number, the average marketing spend from? I'm probably going to get that from the industry. I could say, oh, well, that's a thousand bucks times 60,000, you know, so it's a six million dollar industry. You know, just do, do the math, whatever that all, all works out to be with the numbers. I'm just pulling numbers out. But the point is, is there's a lot of elements in a business plan that are not really relevant as opposed to the actionable items. And so, albeit I have a one year plan, okay, and and it's an ongoing thing that I, I update at the end of the year, and it does discuss a lot of this fluff, but if I'm really getting down to work and dirty, my marketing plan, my execution plan that I'm talking about that I printed beside me is one, two, four pages, and it's direct. It's, you know, uh, we want to join one national association by September 1st, 2015. Now, we wanted to get uh, an email list to get that available by, you know, 060115. Uh, this is where we get it, and this is what we're going to get. You know, by by this date, we wanted to create three uh, three videos, and the videos are going to target you know this audience, and going to say these things. So we spent some time on business plans, and uh, I hope after this discussion, if you don't have a business plan, you're feeling a little bit of guilt as an entrepreneur, and after this call, you're going to start jotting it down on a napkin what you want to do this week, this quarter, or this year. Um, we did get into some details implementing uh, WordPress sites, and uh, most most of the students are, are redoing their site and getting a brand new site that's out there. And I've commissioned them to, you know, you, you have a working site within a week. Very, very aggressive, uh, but it's feasible. And and it's important to continue that push. Uh, and again, in addition to, to planning, um, how how do you manage yourself? How do you manage your tasks? And how do you prioritize your, your tasks? How do you as an entrepreneur overcome the feeling of feeling overwhelmed? And that's a normal feeling. It doesn't matter what business you're in, uh, whether it's a restaurant business. And I think of my buddy, Harry, uh, how he feels overwhelmed running, making hamburgers. And my buddy, Mike, that's feeling extremely overwhelmed because he takes photography pictures. But no, he's also a businessman now. It's the same thing. Um, you know, there's so much in this business, in this industry, that it's very, very common to feel overwhelmed. And how how does a person handle feeling overwhelmed? You go drink some wine? Go smoke a joint? Go exercise? You know, um, there's a lot of things that we could do. I, I was giving ideas on how to remove stress, but you see stress is a byproduct of feeling overwhelmed. So these activities are not really going to address the, the cause, you know, the underlying cause, and that's, that's the feeling of overwhelmness. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is feeling overwhelmed is, is very, very normal, and it's something we've got to go through, and it's all in your head. It's, it's all in your head. And one way to overcome feeling overwhelmed is to have priorities, to have your list, to have that plan that I'm talking about, to have it available to you. And so we're collaborating back and forth, utilizing Basecamp. And of course, you know, getting your tools all ready. We talked about the different CRM applications that are out there. And I'll, again, I'm gonna be straight up about this. I have two students in this program that between the two of them are doing $30,000 a month in revenue, and neither one of them had a CRM in place. Mine, that blew me away. Not, not that they're, they're wrong, they were, they're able to build five-figure businesses without a CRM. And the power of a CRM, let alone, forget about the marketing aspects of campaigns and autoresponders. The CRM tool is critical from day one. 
And how are you managing your customers? I just I not your customers, your 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 contacts, your prospects. So the different CRM tools that we're implementing are Zoho, which is relatively inexpensive, and the best one that's out there, and that's Infusionsoft, hands down. So um, now getting to the update, photo spheres, photo spheres. God, that just sounds so strange. Photospheres, shafirs. Now, you know what? This is one of those words that I've looked at now, and it just, it it doesn't look like a word to me. Shafir. Well, what do we know about the, you know, the, the, the business view or, or Google Street view? And, you know, with the business view, you can get 360 degree photographs of your business. Now, as an agency, in order to do this, you've got to be a trusted photographer of Google. And there are two options to go in there and get trusted. You could either be a trusted agency or a trusted photographer. And I've been through the process of be trying to become a trusted agency. Now, if I became a trusted agency for business view, that would allow me to go inside these businesses, take pictures, and upload them to the area of Google so they can have the 360 degree virtual view where they can go through the, and we've tried this. And we've got, we had quite a few customers that we had gotten all the photography lined up and gone through the process of be trying to become a trusted agency twice. We can't become a trusted photographer because we're not a photography business. We're an agency. And I would like to find somebody that has been through that process and achieved success because we haven't achieved success. We, we've called, we've, I've tried everything. And uh, either they're just completely ignoring me or, or that you know they've got enough trusted photographers that they don't need trusted agencies and they've got four trusted photographers in my area that, uh, I mean, I'm not a photographer, even though I know enough, it's just in their eyes, a professional is, is better to, to take photos. Anyhow, this photosphere is like the, uh, the poor man's version of business view. It's, re it's very, very new. Google just released it. Um, and it supports something called collections. And these collections can be integrated into Google Maps to have an improved flow and allow the creation and uploading to Photospheres. In other words, we don't need to be a trusted agent or a trusted photographer to replicate what they are doing. Now it's two different solutions. So I got to assume that a business view is going to override a photosphere, but that's okay. Now we've got the ability to go in. And what's important with this and what value it gives for both your customers and everyone else that's looking for that business, it's a virtual tour. They can see the office. I mean, I've been teaching this for six years, and, and for six years I've been saying every small business needs five videos. So every one of your clients needs, you know, eventually within your first six months to get them five different videos. And I go through what I think are, and it's what I think, I don't know what others think, but I, what I think are the five best videos for a small business to have. Now all that training, all that video training is inside the LMS portal. You can go and get it. But one of those videos is what we call a walkthrough. And we grab our camera, we record 10, 15 minutes of video of recording everything that's in there and cut it up and speed it up. So it turns into a 60 second walkthrough of their office. I think that's important because if I'm going to see a doctor and I'm looking at two different chiropractors, maybe I'm gonna make my decision based off of what their office looks like. And I don't have to go there and drive there. 
So if it really is that important, it was very, very clear. Then we saw Google launch about two years ago, their business view. And I went, finally, right on. I think that this is going to be a ranking factor because I think this increases the value that goes out to prospects. So everybody should get on this. And we, can't, we couldn't get approved. So now I think Google is still saying, all right, this business view program with certified trusted agents, agencies and photographers, I don't think it's working very well. It's cost a lot of money. It costs between $500 and $2,000 to get somebody in. And yet Google still looks at this and says, but we need the interior pictures. And then somebody says, but we can't allow people to use this system because they're going to mess this, this, and this up. And we're going to blah, blah, blah. All right, let's develop a lower end version of it. And that's what photospheres are. That's what I've learned about it. I will tell you, I don't have any experience on it yet. Next week, I will talk about that a little bit more. Uh, what do we got going on here? Okay, somebody that's got their hand up and uh, usually is not telling me that there's any problems, that's good. Because I, I, I don't even want to say it on the call right now. I don't even want to tell you guys that I'm still using this wireless Bluetooth headset that I'm on. Uh, I, I got I to gotta find wireless, man. I got to figure out ways. I just I get so frustrated with this thing. But, man, I can't, can't be tied down. Maybe that's why I'm single. <laughs> um Google has adjusted how they show the index count. I just got to kind of report on some of this. It's not that big of a deal, but all the index count is is like, uh, well, here's an example. You guys know I, I teach. You guys know I got courses. And you can go to Local Marketing Source and get my course. Or you could also go to Udemy, U-D-U-M-Y uh, dot com, and they've got 10,000 other courses on there. And... Um, you can buy my 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 product there. Now it's not as as good because you, you don't have the community and you don't have the local marketing source portal. But here's the deal: two days ago or three days ago, I get an email saying, "Check out this promotion. You can go and check this out. This is three hundred and eighty dollars in value. Go and look at this link here. We can give you this exact." course from Udemy, and by the way, this is a promotion from, from Fiverr, from somebody from Fiverr, and it said, you can go and get this exact course from Udemy and pay 100 bucks for it, or you can buy it from me on Fiverr right now for $5. And I went, son of a gun, let me go look. Holy shit, that's my course they're selling when I saw it. In other words, somebody stole my stuff off of Udemy and uh, has repackaged it and making it available for download off of Fiverr. Now, stealing content on the internet, it hurt me so bad the first time that happened when I found it five years ago. I'm selling a course for 1,700 bucks and I spent months and months of my time on it and then somebody's giving it away for free on a pirate site. So everybody that's listening to this call right now, whether it's the free call or you're a paid member, every piece of my content can probably be found somewhere on the internet. I know that my first course is out there entirely. All the relatively new content, once we switched to a membership, it didn't. people didn't come and steal the information as much. But where I'm going with this story is I thought, well, Udemy, you know, they just received $50 million in investment. They're a big company. Fiverr, Fiverr's a pretty darn big corporation too. So Udemy is allowing people to steal stuff and Fiverr is allowing it to be sold all in the United States and there's nothing I can really do about it. Um, I could file a DMCA complaint. That's the Digital or the Millennium Digital Copyright Act, the M yeah, MDCA, I guess it is. And then, uh, you know, give them a takedown notice. And I can also contact customer service at Fiverr and they'll take that down. But... Let's go and talk about the Google count, the index count. So I went and did a search for Udemy on Fiverr. 
Google.com utilizing a, you know, not a sophisticated search, but it gives me how many pages are in the Google index that has the word Udemy on it uh, on the Fiverr.com site. And guess what? There's 540 or something like that at that time. And so I wrote in the private group on Udemy and I said, listen, you know, this complaint has been coming back and forth quite some time. You guys have thousands and thousands of educators that are getting their content stolen. And you guys are saying, oh, don't worry about it. Just find it. And we'll take it down. And I said, I think this is your responsibility to do this. And it created a massive discussion inside of this this group. It's still going on and it's heated because it's fairly split. And, you know, one guy comes up and says, man, Scott, you are so ignorant to think that Udemy is responsible for protecting your content. That's your content. You're the author. It's your responsibility to go out there and find it and get it taken down. Well, I tend to feel a little bit different on all of that. And so do a lot of others feel on that. Basically, in other words, what's sparking right now is uh, we've started to file that MDCA complaint. And Fiverr and Udemy have now reached out and they're now talking. Those two companies are now talking on implementing a solution. Uh, in other words, kind of like, you know, a Google notification solution. I use a long story. I thought I would share that story. Uh, but back to the update, we're talking about how Google, <laughs> how, how Google adjusted their index count. All right. Um, there's two things that just happened recently that if you're utilizing this tool, you may want to re and go and check that out again. Uh, but a few weeks ago, um, the index count in Google was significantly dropped. And Google has said, well, this is a change that reflects more accurate information on how pages in Google is being indexed. In other words, Google says, hey, we're doing it wrong before. We think we're a little bit better now. Uh, but at the same time, um, there was also a bug that was in there and it reverted back to the old count. And so different browsers at different times were getting different information and different searches. So I thought I'd share that with you guys just to see if it came up. But anyhow, that's the conclusion of this week's update. I'm gonna take 30 seconds now and come back. And it looks like Nick's first on the line to get his question answered. Well, thanks for watching the local marketing industry update. We've got these things coming out every single week. So if you liked with what you heard, just click the button right above me right here to subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to get a little bit more, right over here, go check out localmarketingsource.com. We've got free reports that you can grab. You can even register for our free marketing course to get in and see the portal. Or just go ahead and follow us on some of the social channels. We'll be around. Until next time.